But the word of God, I know people think Christians are just hateful and judgmental. We see sin, and sometimes we may fall short and sin ourselves. And the thing is, we beat ourselves up too. We don't just beat others up. <laughs> and I'm not saying this, that we just walk around beating people up. But sometimes a stiff hand brings change too. You understand? That's like you're knowing something going on at your job or knowing something going on in your house and you need it need to be fixed and you just, oh, I ain't worried about it. I'm going to give it to God. I ain't worried about it. I'm going to give it to God. But God will put it in your power to do something about it. Sometimes you got to do something about it. Sometimes doing something about it is just saying something about it. You got to warn people sometimes. I got a co-worker that worked with me. I'm not going to go into detail. But he got in trouble. And God said in my mind to tell him some information. To tell him some prophetic warning. And I told him. And let's put it this way. He didn't listen. Now he's back in trouble. You understand? Did I say it because I'm jealous? Because I'm angry with him? No, I said it because I want to help. Sometimes you got to say something to people. Whether they listen, it's up to them. But at least you told them. And Jeremiah, Isaiah, one of them, he said, if, if I tell you to tell somebody something, and you don't tell them what I told you, I will hold you accountable. But you know, knowing you told somebody something, and then something go wrong or go right, it makes you feel better about yourself. You have no guilt. Like I should have said something. I should have said something. I saw it. But I should have said something. Where do you think that come from? Where do you think that feeling come from? God? That conviction come from? Sometimes what you don't do leads to conviction too. You understand? Sometimes what you do leads to conviction. You understand? That's why you need God. That's why you need to pray to Him so you can operate in His will. You understand? That's part of being a Christian. You know, Christ loves us. God loves us. He loves us with an undying love that nobody can compare to. Nobody in this world can love you like Jesus. Can he love you like the Lord. You understand? Nobody can. You know, if you read the Bible, you hear when people rebel against God and God steps back. And they think that's not love. To step back. And let people do what they do. But you can't. God don't force nobody to do something. He still loves you. You know. He's, he just steps back. Oh you don't want to listen to me? You want to rebel against me? Children of Israel. Guess what? Your enemy is going to overtake you. You're going to lose your armor. When you rebel against me, when you commit adultery and whoredoms against me, you bringing the enemy closer to your doorstep. You understand? Yes, I'm allowing it, but you're doing it to yourself. Because you stop calling on me. You stop living the way I told you to. Would you expect me to keep letting? I got to show you something. I got to show you how much you need me. That's why he said, my children that are called by my name will humble themselves and call on me, I will heal their land. But let me tell you something, calling on the Lord, I ain't just calling them and then he come in and save the day and going back to doing what you once were doing. So guess what? You just set yourself up to fall away again. And guess what? God's going to come in and save you every time. Every time. But sometimes he saves you differently from what, how you expect. I bet there are many people are in jail right now because God saved them from being murdered in the streets. You see, like parents, take us for example. Our kids in trouble. We will pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, please help my son. Please help my daughter. And then come, God comes in and have them get arrested. Allow them to be arrested and put in jail. 
so they can have some time away from the street, some time to think, some time to reach out for him. And then us parents, we start listening to the kid. Hey, I can't be in this place. Please bail me out. Please bail me out. And you got a habit of doing this all the time. And you keep going through. God comes in and saves them. And you come in and bail them out. God comes in and saves them. And you come in and bail them out. And you're like, Lord, what am I doing wrong? I saved them. What are you doing? You think helping sometimes, helping somebody get out of a jam, is not always the right thing to do. Sometimes you got to let them sit there and meditate. Because you know when they get, I'm going to get out and I'm going to do better. I'm going to get out and I'm going to do better. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Then they get out and they go back. That's not always the case. Some people learn a little faster than others. Some people don't learn. They keep getting out and doing the same thing. God saves them. They go back. They go clean for a little while. And then they go back to the streets. Or they go back to this. Or they go back to that. God has delivered them out of an abusive relationship. Put the person in jail that beats them. And they go back. They go back. They go bail them out. And then they get beat again. Do you understand, people? God's ways is not like our ways. First thing you got to realize that whom the Lord loves, he chastises. And guess what? He chastises all of us. The thing is, you got to realize it, who your help comes from and also who your chastisement comes from. To all glory be to God. I was reading Psalms 89 today. And David was talking about God's mercy in his life. How God has exalted him in his throne. And then a few verses later, how long, Lord, will you be wroth with me? <laughs> you understand? Give me some mercy. Then he said, blessed be the Lord God. One thing about David being a man of, after God's own heart, he recognized when he did wrong, and he recognized when it was a God allowing him to, when Lord God was allowing him to go through certain things because of what he did. Lord, how long will you be rough with me? Please return to me. Show me your mercy, Lord Jesus. David knew sometimes when God stepped back. You understand? But the thing is, guess what he stepped, kept doing? He still blessed the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. After all that, after all he went through, he still called upon God. Even when he made mistakes, he still called upon the Lord. You see, a lot of people don't look at, let's put it this way, I'm going to give you David's story. I'm going to put it to you the best way I know how, first of all. You see, God sits high and we sit low. And he watches everything. He watches every move we make. Some days he swoops in and stops us from falling off that cliff. You understand? Sometimes he lets us fall a little bit. But it's all for our good. You see, you got to take David, for example. He's been anointed king. He's a little powerful now. He's got a little power. He tell one person to come here, they go. He tell one person to go there, they go. He's got a little power. And his power is kind of going to his head a little bit. It's going to his head. Hey, who is that woman over there? Bring her to me. You know, his servant was like, hey, you know, that's all so-and-so wife. Bring her to me. Then he sleep with her and gets her pregnant, then try to cover the sin up. You see, most people look at that situation like, there's no way David is a man of God after doing such things. I'm telling you why he was a man after God's own heart. When God came in and chastised him, he took it. And you got to think about it. Throughout David's life, I ain't say he never, I'm sure his whole life story ain't fit in, the, fit in there. But you never saw him commit adultery again. 
because he saw what happened when he rebelled against God. Strife was in his heart for the rest of his life for one mistake, but he never stopped calling on God and he started being more obedient. God humbled him. Sometimes moving up the chain can cause your head to get big and then God got to bring you back low a little bit to let you realize, hey, don't do that. Slap on the wrist. He told Solomon, don't let people, women change your heart. More than one occasion. Probably more than that what is written. I'm sure when he was building these altars to these strange wives and these strange women that served other gods, I'm sure some kind of conviction was going on in his heart. But he just kept doing it and kept doing it and God allowed him to. God allowed him to pollute his own land. Then right before he died, he was like, you know what? Solomon, you fell away from me. You let these women change your heart. You know, I would be a God to take the kingdom from your hand. I can do that. You know that though, right? But I made a promise to my servant, David. And I'm going to always keep somebody from his seat on the throne. But just to let you know, I'm going to take the kingdom from your son's hand. You rebel and causes your son to rebel against me. You got to understand, when you rebel against somebody, they, your kids follow your example. They follow your lead. And you read through Kings and you read through Chronicles. You will see how so many kids followed after their parents and did evil in the sight of the Lord. Because what? It's there. The land was polluted. He'll say, I found, I found one that lived according to my will, but they still offered up incense in high places. But, so you know they was offering up incense to other people. They still were right, but they still didn't cleanse the land all the way. They left a few things down. And that little remnant of evil keep coming back and biting them in the butt, leaving just a little bit of remnant. He said if there's a little bit of darkness in you, how great is that light? You got to understand that you might think that darkness is light. And it's not. It's actually darkness. When you do something for so long, you don't even realize it's darkness anymore. I watched a movie yesterday called Why Did You Kill Me? And I was watching this show about this woman, about this daughter who was killed by uh, uh, some bullets from a gang. And uh, the mother was just hateful. She was out for revenge. She was out for revenge on these people. And she did all types of things, make up a Facebook page, do that. And she did a lot of help, don't get me wrong. But she was so caught up on vengeance that she was at a point where she was about to kill these people herself. You understand? She was about to kill these people herself. And then what happened was, one of her sons joined the game and started falling down the same footsteps as the person that killed her family. And they opened her eyes and it made her show compassion on the murderer of her daughter. You understand? And she, she was seeking the death penalty at first, she wanted him to die. Then her heart changed. God came in and changed her heart. She was like, God's grace. But it was something weird that happened in the movie. Towards the end of the documentary. She was sitting at a table with tarot cards. One moment she's praising God and giving God the glory. Then the next day she's consulting with tarot cards. I'm going to tell you some people. I was like, wow. But the thing is, it goes on now. If you're seeking answer for the Lord, from the Lord, you don't need no other means. You don't need tarot cards. You don't need witchcraft. A little bit of darkness. How great is that darkness? You understand? And the crazy thing of how, how cunning the enemy is, she, the tarot cards told her that judgment was going to be judged on one of the people who was missing for years. And two weeks later, that person was caught. 
So you got to think about her mindset. She's going to be like, well, did God tell me? Or did the tarot cards tell me? You see how cunning the enemy is? You have to keep you confused. And God is not the author of confusion. Once you start doing something too much, you start embracing it. Now you don't know who to trust. Do I trust the Lord? Do I trust God? Or do I trust these tarot cards? You're torn. You understand? You're confused. And God is not the author of confusion. And there'll be many that go that way. You understand? You know, I talk about these things because I, I've experienced it. And I almost fell victim to the same thing that Solomon fell victim to. And the thing is, in this world, the enemy is out there and he works so many ways. And you can't, that's why he don't want you to judge other people. Because you know what? You can fall victim to the same thing as Solomon. You can fall victim to the same thing that Samson fell victim to about his hair getting cut off. My, my cousin, we was talking at work, was talking about a guy who had long hair from birth. And his mother always told him not to cut his hair. And his hair is so long. And then he meet a woman. And he loved this woman. And the first thing the woman said, I, I don't really like your long hair anymore. Could you cut it for me? And he cut it. You think what happens in the Old Testament don't happen today? It happens today. You think if there were, you think there were uh, Nazarites back then, there are still Nazarites now. God does not change. There are still men that has power in their hair. And it's still women out there getting them to cut it off. It's still men that love God and love strange women that do other things and fall victim to their ways. In the same household, you got witchcraft and you got God. How do I know this? I was in a household like that, but God delivered me. And I try to warn as many people as I can about the deceitfulness of these things. You understand? I don't hate them by no means. But I have to be part of this. One thing he was talking about the morning is being of one mind. And Philippians, he's talking about being of one mind. Even in your own mind, you need to be of one mind with the Lord. If you ain't one mind with somebody else, be at least one mind with the Lord. He's going to keep you on track. You understand? You know, you can't serve Baal and God. You can't serve Astaroth and God. You can't serve sorcery and God. You can't serve evil and good. He says, like, brother, you're going to hate the one and love the other. One of them is going to draw you closer than the other. Choose wisely. Work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling, says Philippians. Why? Because the enemy has many tools. The prince of this world been weaving his web of deception since the beginning. You understand? When God told the children of Israel for to give you to a promised land, he gave them instructions. Now what happens normally when somebody gives you instructions? Who is it up to to keep those instructions? Who is it up to? To keep the instructions that are given to you. You work at a job. Hey, today I want you to clean the bathroom, mop the floors, and take out the trash. Instructions. Are there, your bosses going to make you do those things? No. They told you to do them. It's up to you to do it. And if you don't do it and over and over again, eventually that boss is going to get tired. You don't do anything I ask you to do. I'm going to find somebody that does. I'm going to have to let you go. Why? Because you were rebellious. Why? Because you didn't do what I asked of you. Why? Why? You know why. Oh, you thought you thought I was turning a blind eye because I gave you a pass for two years. You thought I was, I was showing you mercy for two years. I was showing you grace for two years. Yet, Two years, you didn't get better, you got worse. You started being more rebellious. You started not cleaning up at all. So now I gotta find somebody to do your job 
at another job. Do you understand? But as I was saying, God told the children of Israel, let me pause and I will continue. 